Hello and greetings from Toyama, the capital city of Toyama Prefecture. This destination was the best surprise of our trip across Japan. We came to Toyama with zero expectations and only added it to our itinerary because it was a convenient stopover destination. I, I don't know, just something about this city clicked with us, I'd yeah. say. However, Toyama won us over within minutes of arriving. In this Toyama travel guide, we'll take you on a boat trip down the Matsukawa River. We should just watch. Yeah. They know the routine. Wow. We'll try some classic classic dishes like Toyama black ramen and Toyama glass shrimp. Yours is better than mine. I should have ordered the same as you. We'll visit the neighboring port and beach town of Iwasehama. I feel like we're swimming. And so much more. So join us as we share some of the top things to do in Toyama, Japan. Well, good morning from Toyama Castle Park. We are currently up on the observation deck of Toyama Castle and just enjoying some views of the city, getting a lay of the land. It's nice and early in the morning, so we've got some beautiful soft light. And we can actually see some mountains around us. Now, in that direction, we have the Japanese Alps, but unfortunately, there has been a lot of construction. So you've got quite some tall buildings that are covering the view. But if you look carefully off of the horizon, you do have some snow-capped mountains. So yeah, we're just enjoying those views, looking forward to exploring this garden. And this already feels like such a cool city. Toyama Castle Park is home to the former grounds of Toyama Castle. Here you can visit the reconstructed castle keep, which houses the Toyama Municipal Folk Museum. Plus, you also have an art museum and beautiful gardens to enjoy within the park grounds. Guys, I am absolutely loving Toyama. Just one of those cities that like when Instantly when we arrived, we were just mm -hmm. picking up on some vibes. I don't know if it's the coast or the chill kind of laid back nature of the place, but I can tell that we're going to really like this place. It looks like there's quite a bit to do in and around the city center. We're also going to be heading out to a beach area. We've got so much to do while we're here. I'm just really excited to be here and I can already tell that I really like this place. Next, we boarded the Matsukawa Pleasure Boat, a relaxing sightseeing cruise on the Matsukawa River. It was a really nice journey, and even though the narration was entirely in Japanese and we couldn't understand anything, we did enjoy the scenery. The captain let us know this is an especially nice journey in the springtime when the cherry blossoms are in bloom. getting to feed the fish at the end of the trip. This is clearly part of their daily routine because they were waiting for us. Yeah. We're gonna feed the fish one one we're little nibble at a time. We're feeding the fish. Check this little out. Little bit, little bit. Oh, look at them. There's so many. <laughs> they know the routine, clearly. I couldn't understand why they were so interested in the boat. We know the food's coming. Look at the size of that one! Oh! oh. <laughs> that was fun! Yeah, unexpected and very fun. Look at them all. They know the routine. Splishity splash, splishity splash. They know the routine, wow. Alrighty, so we just enjoyed a lovely boat ride on the Matsukawa River. Yeah. It's called a pleasure boat. And it really was. <laughs> it is. It's like the most tranquil boat ride mm -hmm. you could ever have. This, this, this city just has such peaceful, welcoming vibes to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. There's just something about this place that feels a bit special so far. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, and I think, I don't know if speaking on my behalf, my favorite experience was actually feeding the fish. Where they oh, for a yeah, bit. that was so cool. I couldn't understand why the fish were so interested in the boat. Like they were just following us around. <laughs> well, it turns out they yeah. know they're going to be fed by the guests. 
Yeah. So that was really nice and just such a scenic ride because the canal is lined with cherry blossom trees yeah. and obviously it's not the right season but you can just imagine what this place would be oh. like in the in the springtime. It would be spectacular to come in the spring. So overall just a, a great way to take it in. Something to consider is we'll probably come back because along the canal there's a walking path yes. with 28 sculptures from local artists. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to maybe do that later and there's also a tea house so Stay tuned, we'll be, uh, we'll be back here. And before I forget, I will mention the price. It was 1600 yen per person for that boat tour. And I think we were on the water for maybe about 45 minutes or so. So yeah, really nice and would highly recommend if you're in the area. We also visited the Keiun Bridge, which crosses the Matsukawa River. This is a really nice spot for pictures and we were most impressed by the giant colorful koi fish. Look at its eyes, Audrey. I've never seen one so yellow before. No, look at all the ones here. Sam's, if you think that one's a big boy, come over here. Look, that's, oh that's the gosh, golden they're, one. They're beautiful. Wow. And you can see them so well. The, the, the water is so transparent here. I wish we had food. I'm so sorry. So food, fishies. I'm hungry too, fish. I understand your plight. Feed me. We decided to do something a little unusual for lunch and visited Ikedaya Yasube Shoten. This is a traditional medicine shop in Toyama that dates back to 1936. They have a restaurant on the second floor where you can enjoy a meal with healthy ingredients and medicinal herbs. First course, tea, a medicinal tea. That is unique tea. Mm. Wait till you try it. Okay, I imagine this little paper is the explanation of what we're having exactly. Grapes, fig, cucumber. Friends, our next course has arrived. Pumpkin, some lotus root, and some walnut. Reminds me a bit of Korean juke, the rice porridge. It is like a, a cold porridge. It's not hot. Well, the food keeps on coming. Mushrooms and a giant shrimp. This looks like it could be cabbage, then a little soup with shredded carrots, a meatball, parsley, and now this arrived, guys. Ooh la la. That reminds me of the Korean royal rice. Remember that purple rice? Yep. With plum? Look, we have mushrooms. Egg, potato, a chestnut. Oh, it's chestnut! You're right. And maybe a bamboo shoot. Maybe and bamboo shoot. That's what. That it looks. Is. That smells so good. So aromatic. Oh my gosh! Wow. This this meal is amazing. It's the most unique thing we've ever had in Japan. Yeah. Hands sure. down. What we noticed was that they used lots of fresh ingredients, including plenty of raw fruit and lightly steamed vegetables. There were no spices or strong flavors, but plenty of interesting textures. The portions were small and well thought out, but because it was a multi-course meal, we were satisfied by the end of lunch. Not stuffed, but perfectly content. Of course, we had to visit the medicinal shop on the way out. We've never had anything quite like that before in Japan. And of course it was all very healthy. You didn't have salt and pepper put on the dishes. Also we noticed most things were steamed as well as opposed to being fried. So again, very healthy. My favorite thing of all was the sticky rice and I especially enjoyed the chestnuts too. Yes, and price point that was 3300 yen per person. Yeah. Quite a, quite a good deal considering all the courses and the dessert and the appetizers and they kept bringing us tea and just a beautiful environment. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Toyama is famous for glass and what's surprising is that this ties in with its history as a medicine manufacturing city. Toyama became a major producer of blown glass about a century ago when Japan began to industrialize, and they specifically focused on making glass medicine bottles. We were curious to see what Toyama glass was all about, so we visited the Toyama Glass Art Museum, which is housed in the Toyama Kirari. Even if you're not into glass, visit the building because it's a true architectural delight. It also houses a library, and it's a super cool place to walk through. 
Unfortunately, filming isn't allowed inside the glass museum, but they have a really cool Chihuly glass exhibit. Okay, so we are currently inside the Toyama Glass Art Museum, and I think we've been even more amazed by the building than the art, and the art is pretty cool. Yeah, you walk in and you're just like, wow, look at the escalators going up modern and some traditional elements too yeah and it feels kind of earthy with all the wood and like the interplay with light bouncing off the mirrors it's yeah. it's a really cool building so right. even if you don't want to visit the museum i would say come in here just for the architecture and the design yeah there's like an incredible multi-floor library that's being mm -hmm. well used oh, yeah. by people of all ages there's mm -hmm. older gentlemen reading newspapers, there's students here studying, and there's people that are using this space for all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, it doesn't appear to be like any dining, it's just kind of like a public space for people to enjoy a quiet yeah. time. You also don't hear a lot of talking, so I'm trying to keep my voice a little bit quiet. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, very interesting, it just, I had no expectations, came in and just found it to be a fascinating building. Yeah. We then retraced our steps back to the Matsukawa River and visited a little cafe right where our morning boat tour had departed from. We got a matcha parfait, matcha tea, and mitarashi dango, traditional Japanese rice dumplings covered in a sweet soy glaze. So this is my little afternoon dessert, little sweet treat. I got a parfait and it's got a little wafer with the castle, Toyama castle. We have a pepper stick with green matcha chocolate. Looks like I have some granola, matcha ice cream, jelly. You have the beans. I have the beans. You got some walnuts maybe or some rice, mm. some puffed rice. That's really good. Looks amazing. Oh, this the uh, war war rubber match. Oh, too. warabi mochi. Rubber yeah, mochi. I really like that mochi. It's the one that's very jelly like. That's that's got it all. I'm gonna try and get a bit of the granola. There's so many different ingredients here. Oh, Just want to get a taste of everything. So good. So we have over here. Mm, that might be a mochi. That one's chewy. <laughs> Beautiful little spot here, guys. I should show you. This is where we did our boat tour earlier. Mm. Take a look. It was the boat we went on. Oh, there, it looks like they're heading out again. Or he's putting it away, maybe. Yeah, so I ended up going for the uh, matcha green tea set with mm. the dango, mm. which are the sticky rice balls. Yum. Look at that. You gonna try one? Yeah, I'm gonna try one right now. Check that out. Such a nice soft texture. I love that sauce. It's kind of like, it's sweet, but it's tangy too. I just love matcha. And this cup is just legendary. Look, I can't even, I can't even grip it fully. It's so good. See the that? size of a soup bowl. That was a nice little sweet treat, you know, something small, something simple. Actually, it wasn't simple. My dessert was quite elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, mine, if you weren't as hungry, mine would have been the one to have. It's just four little bites and some wonderful matcha tea. Just a really nice place, just a beautiful mm -hmm. location. Um, this city is just filled with greenery and mm -hmm. quiet spots. And now what we're doing is we're going to take a walk along the place that we went on the boat tour this morning to check out some of the sculptures. Apparently there's 28. We'll show you some of those. went up the Toyama City Hall observation tower for city views just as the sun was starting to set. The observation deck offers 360 degree panoramic views and it stands 70 meters high. The best part is that it's completely free. Good morning. 
morning, good morning, friends. We are in a completely different area of the city. Yes, so day two around these parts, and today we have gone on a little day trip to a place called Iwasehama. We're currently at Iwasehama Beach, and it was just maybe like a 30 minute tram ride just north of Toyama. And a little tip to share with you guys, most hotels have free tram passes for guests. Yep. So we made use of those. You actually get two tickets each, one for the way there, one for the way back. And it's a great way to move around the city. Yeah, it's amazing. If you were going to pay, I think it's 210 yen. Yeah. But why not go for free? That's my favorite <laughs> price of all. And it's a really interesting ride. We ended up going through the central station and then we started to get to more of the outskirts of the town. It was mm -hmm. kind of fascinating to see how the buildings got a lot smaller, more traditional homes. And then eventually you just arrive and you're like, you're at the beach. It's like a whole different environment over here. Feels like, a, like <laughs> an entirely different city, to be honest. And what I really like is that we're currently at the beach, but we also have mountain views. So it feels like the best of both worlds. Yeah. And the weather, we could not have asked for a better day today seriously yeah I usually get one or the other not both mm. so this is a pretty spectacular city it's already been really growing on us and now that we're out at the beach and we're having mountain views we're like man this place is amazing it's kind of a hidden gem in, <laughs> in Japan to be honest well how's it going beach boy it's amazing like I still can't get over how warm the water is this is just, look at this okay. <laughs> I feel like we're swimming I'm not noticing anyone else swimming, so it's, I'm thinking like, is there something wrong? Is there a reason why no one's going in there? But it feels absolutely amazing. It's so warm. It's just, there's nothing like getting your feet wet and walking along as the waves are coming in. You know, it looks really clear. Like the water yeah. actually looks beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so warm. It's just, this is, this is awesome. I wasn't exactly expecting this. It reminds me of when we were in Niigata yeah. and again, the water was beautiful. Nobody else was going in. I know. I was thinking like, oh, it's been a few weeks later. It's going to be a lot colder. No, nope, it's just perfect out there. I'm going to go back and enjoy. <laughs> Friends, I just have to be completely honest. I could have spent the entire afternoon there. I just can't believe how lovely it is. The sun is out. We've got like low 20 degree temperatures. And this is like the middle of October. That's like unheard of where we're from. You wouldn't get warm weather like this this time of year and a nice day like that. It's just amazing. Uh, I could have spent the whole day there. Yeah, and you're yeah. still rocking your t-shirt, shorts, yeah. sandals, summer attire. But we have more places to show you in this area. So let's continue. Japanese glass shrimp, locally known as shiroebi, is the thing to try in Toyama. They are caught in Toyama Bay and are a huge part of the local fishing industry. Mealtime once again, and Toyama is known for its glass shrimp or white shrimp. So we have ordered a dish. I already forgot. Was it shrimp tempura? It's glass shrimp croquette. Glass shrimp croquette. Okay, and yes. we also got some fried cod. So we're sticking to the seafood yeah. theme. They're both uh, set meals. So this place had a number of set meals. We also had sashimi and, and some other different kinds of fish. So. We are, of course, hanging out along the coast, so we gotta try the seafood out here. Check out that set. Yeah, the sets have arrived. They look amazing. So I have the fried cod here. It's all been cut up into nice bite-sized pieces. I have six of them. Comes with a salad, miso soup, rice, and what I believe is a gravy. So let me pour that on top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Well, that's, that's going for a swim, hey? I'm going to town on that. Let me try a bite. Oh my gosh. That's great. 
Just delicious food out here by the coast. Loving it. And you've got... I have the glass shrimp croquettes. You try those. And those are shrimp croquettes right there. Very nice. I can't Very wait to try one too. Good that stuff. delicious. Yeah, great meal here. Yeah, and it came with a little bit of coleslaw on the side. Mm, good. Nice good little lunch here. It is great here. What a great lunch. Another good meal in the books. Yeah, good price too. Thirteen fifty each for the set. So it came to mm -hmm. what, 2700 in total? Yeah. So yeah, that was a nice lunch. Just a nice balanced lunch. Not gut busting. Just the right amount of food. The veggies, the miso soup, the rice, and of course the delicious fish and shrimp. So. Yes, another must try in Toyama. There you go. Yeah, and it was getting busy in there. So oh, uh, yes. it's a, it's a, it was a happening place. All locals too. Here we have Sam taking one for the team. He climbed all the way up. I was volunteered to go up after yes. lunch. Hey, it was worth it. The views were great. There's a huge ferry that's loading at the moment. Um, it looks industrial from the outside, but there's all these like pedestrian and irregular cars going on. So no idea where it's going. Wow. Um, great views. You have the mountains off in the opposite direction. And it's just, uh, it's fun walking up. There's a, a neat little netting they have there. Yes. And it's like a buoy, the balls. Yeah, it's free, but you gotta earn it. You gotta, yes. you gotta leg it up. All the way up there, my friends. I just couldn't, not after lunch. Continues, what? There are a few different historic homes you can visit in Iwasehama, and we chose Baba House. This is the former home of a family of shipping wholesalers who apparently made quite the fortune. The place was massive with beautiful exposed wooden beams, tatami floors, and the garden. If you enjoy traditional Japanese architecture, you'll enjoy this house. So we are currently visiting the Hiei Shrine, which is very close to the hotel where we're staying. And the unique thing about this Shinto Shrine is that it has lots of animal sculptures. And we've just discovered, I think, the cutest one. So many different animals, all looking cute. Chickens, monkeys, sheep. What else do we have here? Bunnies, cows. Yeah, they just, they are exactly as you said. They're so cute. cute. They're kawaii! They're so cute. Little travel tip for us? Yeah guys, so if you're coming to Japan and you're wanting to distinguish between a Buddhist temple, a Shinto shrine, it's quite easy. If you see the Tori gates, you know you're at a Shinto shrine. Yes, they're yeah. painted a bright like orangey red color. So that's the easiest way to distinguish between the two. Another meal we simply had to try is Toyama Black Ramen. It seems like almost every city in Japan has its own unique version of ramen, and here in Toyama, that was no exception. And friends, here we wait too. Apparently, <laughs> 11.30 is a popular time to have lunch here. 
at least in Toyama, and at least in this train station. I'm gonna get this. Okay. We got in, we got a table. That maybe took 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, it was about, about 15 minutes. Things move pretty quickly. That's one of the nice things about ramen, right? It's one of those meals where you can finish fairly fast. So the table's opened up. And my appetite has opened up too. I'm so excited to try this. This is a very unique and distinct ramen that is known in Toyama. Here is my bowl of black ramen, Toyama style. And this right here is the medium size friends. You can also get large or extra large. So come with a big appetite. We saw we saw another table and there's just like a mountain like this of noodles and bean oh, sprouts. It was just un unbelievable. Yeah, it was like a Mount Everest of, of ramen. So if, you, if you've got the appetite, come and get your extra large. We're going for medium and these, these are very generous. Let's be serious. Friends. So this is the first time for me to, for us to have ever tried black ramen. So what's interesting about it is it's made with chicken soy sauce, but mine features pork. Look at the big piece of pork. And the difference between ours is that you got the egg one, I got the pork one, but apparently the black ramen sauce the, that we have here is it's, uh, it's, they called it on the menu, extreme chicken soy sauce. Yeah, it's a soy broth and it's yeah. very salty. Yeah. So let's try that. I'm gonna try the noodles first. I have to try the broth to get a better opinion of that. And look, yes. it's got some, it looks like some puffed, puffed rice maybe. Look at this. Oh yeah. That is some salty goodness. Wow. Alrighty friends, this is my bowl here and I want to mention something about the broth. So I've been reading a little bit about the history, why, why the black broth, why the soy broth. And apparently this is the ramen that they used to feed to the workers who used to unload the bags of rice at the shops. It was, you know, very heavy work, very labor intensive, they would sweat a lot. And then in order to get their electrolytes back up, they would make an extra salty broth with soy. Wow, that totally makes sense. Mm. Isn't that good? That's salty but flavorful yeah. as well. That's like nice and savory. It packs a real punch in my opinion. Mm. Good stuff, huh? Also, I think it's really cool that the broth has a soy chicken base, yeah. but then you get the pork. Yeah. So two different meat flavors happening. You pork too. I did get pork as well, yes. Yours is better than mine. Ah. I was thinking like, now I get why it was more expensive. I should have ordered the same as you. We're inside the train station, and I want to mention that three attempts were made to go to the sushi restaurant, and the lines were so, so long that we had to give up. However, we're still gonna show you the trout sushi. Yeah, we sure are. And we were fortunate enough to, to, to go to the, try the conveyor belt sushi when we first came here. We didn't film it, it was on the day we arrived, and it is a good place mm -hmm. when it's not so busy. When it's not we're busy. not willing to spend half the day here waiting. Yeah. So yeah, we have um, we have the goodies right here and we're gonna try them. So inside the station at ground level, they have an area where you can buy all sorts of um, like food souvenirs and like regional snacks. So that's exactly what we did. Um, we kind of just saw a picture, pointed at the item and paid. So I hope we got the right variety. If we did, this should be um, bite-sized pieces of trout sushi 
So we're gonna try that right now. So my concern is whether we bought fermented fish. <laughs> it looks like we might have from, from 2016. Cause like oh. the guy pointed at the date and then he said something and we had no idea. So well, we were like, okay. We've okay. had fermented foods before, so I'm open to trying it. Let's see. Whoa, a lot. It doesn't look fermented. Oh, it looks fresh to me. Looks fresh to me. Look, it comes on that leaf. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. You like it? Oh, yeah. No wasabi, no soy sauce here. Oh. Just rice and trout. Grab and go. Grab and go. Alrighty guys, so we're just enjoying a walk through the park. It's a little bit gray and rainy, so we thought this might be a good time to wrap things yeah, up. We've heard thunder off in the distance. Rumbling. So it's funny because it started off today raining and then we had a pocket of sunshine. We're like, whoa, wow, the rain's going away. No, no, it came back. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of what I thought of Toyama, I absolutely love this place. This is the surprise hit of our trip yes. in terms of cities that we visited wasn't even on our initial itinerary when we came here we just sort of thought oh okay we'll we'll see what it's all about without the highest of expectations and mm -hmm. we ended up loving it we just love it. it has like a very peaceful vibe it has there's a lot of nice things to do a lot of green spaces and i, I don't know just something about this city clicked with us i'd yeah. say I would agree. After not really connecting with our previous destination, Kanazawa, mm -hmm. this was a really pleasant surprise. Like we liked it from the instant we got here. And it just goes to show sometimes like the randomest destinations that you know nothing about are the ones that you end up connecting with and really enjoying. So yeah. it's kind of a reminder to get off the beaten path and sometimes yes. go to places you've never really heard of before and don't know much about. Exactly, I couldn't agree more. And if you're in the area and you have a chance to come to Toyama, we would highly recommend it. Yes. So that's it from us here from Toyama. Hope you enjoyed the city guide. We'll have more travel adventures coming soon from Japan. Ta-ta! Ta-ta!